Well, on today's Wednesday Walkabout, I want to give you an idea of how some of the plants are performing in these 100 degree temperatures. I think today it's supposed to get up to 100 degrees, Stuart, is that right? And, and maybe tomorrow, and then we get a little bit of a break, and then they come back, just an unending stream of them. At least that's what was on my weather app. And by the way, here's a question for you guys. Here's my question of the day. Have your weather apps been all over the place? None of my weather apps, whether it's Apple or AccuWeather or or a local weather app or weather bug. They all have different forecasts. There's no consistency between them. So that's the first part of my question of the day. And the second part is, tell me where you are right now, what zone you garden in, and let me know how hot or maybe inordinately cool it is. I think most of us are under this horrific heat dome though. Okay, so speaking of heat domes, how are some of these plants performing? Well, let me just say that thanks to Mother Nature and all of the rain that we got earlier in the season, I could not be more pleased with how these things have gotten established. And I think they're gonna really be able to sweat out <laughs> these 100 degree temperatures without expiring. So even now, even though typically Encore azaleas bloom in the spring and rebloom in the fall, yes, they are our favorite reblooming azalea, they're spitting out blooms. And now, do they last very long when it's 100 degrees? No, but look at how sweet, that's one that's really tired, but look at this. <laughs> Look at these oh, and wow, the beautiful really buds. Cool. Isn't that gorgeous? So depending on how protected they are from the extreme heat, they will be more or less beautiful. Look at all this new growth. This is autumn carnation. I, I will have to look at the dimensions. Stuart, we might want to put up a little graphic here on autumn carnation and how tall it gets and its, its various dimensions. The thing about encores is they want more sun than you would think. So because of that, pretty much all of the places that I have them is in far more sun than they were at my other house, and they are performing better. So I'm thrilled about that. And just look at all that new, new pest-free, unnibbled foliage. <laughs> That makes me so, so, so happy. Here's another one. Now, interestingly, this is, a, this is one of those occasions where I just in the, put it in the shade again. get in the shade, okay, where I didn't, I didn't remember what I had done. Um, of course, I do things that I think I'm always going to remember. I really wish I would have already had my new garden journal, which by the way, here's my little commercial. It comes out in November. Oh, wow. It's going to be brilliant. I wish I already had it because I could have recorded the fact that these here, these one, two, three, four Encore azaleas are pink carnation, which is a beautiful double pink carnation. The ones here, here, there, and there, there are three or four of them. Yeah, so here. One, two, three, four, five. All of those are white. And um, I think because I wanted both colors and I stopped the pink here because I wanted to flank this doorway in white. Now, later, after they bloom this fall, when I really see what they're gonna do from a design standpoint, I may switch some of them around. But at this point, I'm not gonna do anything to move any one that is established because it's simply too hot. Look at these moon dance, moon dance blooms that are coming, coming out. This is another Southern Living Hydrangea. It's gonna get a little bit taller than the White Wedding. And what I like about it is apparently it's gonna bloom a little bit later. So I'll have this continuum of Hydrangea bloom from earlier in the season to later. Look right here, here's some really big buds. So can you imagine, this is their first year, can you imagine what those are gonna look like when they're established? And I know some of you were a little bit concerned about the ajuga on this orientation, but this is east facing and quite frankly, at least this far, it's doing great. One thing I do know about ajuga, and I should point it out, in case you don't know what it is, this is just a wonderful ground cover, that 
I should also point out, in some places can be invasive. If you get lots of rain, uh, it can be a little bit thuggish, but not here. And in many cases, it is happier than growing grass. And so I really, really love it. I have sprayed, you can see some Bermuda grass in there, and I have sprayed it with some vinegar. And then after it's been there for a while, I will get out my Hori Hori knife which is my best friend this time of year. Some of this is already coming out pretty easily. And I've also started seeing more rampant signs of nut sedge. So I am, I am working on those things and digging those out, but not until in the morning when it's a little bit cooler or even in the evening. However, it's been so hot that it takes so long for the evening temperatures to cool off. And after being outside in the heat of the day, I'm pretty much done. I'm too tired. Yes, Stuart, you have a question. Uh, just quick th uh, thing I heard this morning. Death uh -huh. Valley in uh, whatever, is that California? Oh, Death Valley? It was 110 Valley? degrees at night. Oh, Lordy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm just trying to survive at this point, <laughs> one day at a time. It gets worse, I guess. It does get, it, it, it can be worse. Exactly. It can be worse and we had a little bit cooler start of the summer, but climate change is real. Um, lots more deadheading of the Budlia. The, butter, the candy butterfly or butterfly candy is not lasting. The blooms aren't lasting nearly as long. And as a generalization, blooms in general are not lasting as long because it's just too hot. So they bloom and then things kind of expire. That said, look at that indigo frost agapanthus. That's the white with the purple. And the Cleome. The yeah, the view is good. All of that is doing great. As are, oh my goodness, these Eugenia topiaries. I remember when I bought them many, many years ago that the nursery person told me that these were not boxwood and they really wanted some shade. Au contraire, I have found they perform so much better in as hot and as bright a conditions as you can provide. What you do need to provide is lots of water. So make sure that if you do have them, that you really, really keep them moistened. Now here's a design thing that I think I'm gonna be working on this fall. I love the way I have the better boxwood in the foreground, and as long as I'm down here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick some weeds, I know. As long as I'm in the foreground uh, I've, I, with this gorgeous, better boxwood, and then I've got this Miss Bonnie Spirea right here. I really like the way this kind of fuchsia colored uh, salvia looks behind it. I've trimmed it back and I love the way it looks. It's almost got the look as it's in its same family of sage, but look at all those pretty new buds. I've got more of it on the other side and I think what I'll do is dig it up, divide it, and then continue it around the perimeter of the social patio. Like for example, right there, and maybe right there. And that way it will look more cohesive and it will also fill in some bare spots. One of the reasons that particularly from the drone view, and if you haven't seen Stuart's spectacular droning, you really need to, uh, it, that it looks more piecemeal and like there's just too many plants is because those plants have not grown together. And once they do, it will just look like continual, con continual cohesive color. Some of, oh, here's an example. I think I told you that I pruned or cut back the mound of variegated lemon thyme. And I just stuck some of those cuttings in the ground over here. Never noticed. Never noticed. And they're taking hold. And this is, these are the kind of things, you guys, that make me, that I love 
checking up on in the morning in addition to like seeds germinating and little mounds that I have put other places. Are they doing what I hope they would do? And indeed they are, at least, at least thus far. So I've got, I know some of you, including me to a certain extent, doesn't like the too wild nature and the scale of the peppers and the tomatoes. I'm sorry, but who am I to not let these gorgeous <laughs> creatures just do their thing because they are completely unblemished oh, wow, by pests. They are doing simply, yeah, just simply beautifully. Look at, the, look at these. Normally by now, I have trouble with my tomatoes because it's so hot they won't pollinate. There you go. <laughs> Nothing's better than a vine ripe tomato. I'll join you. Um, ooh, those are good. Wow. Um, so they definitely will stay here as long as they're productive. The other thing is, is if they get too rampant or whatever, I just cut them back. And maybe counterintuitively, they seem to do better and produce more when I do kind of cut them back. And I don't really pay that much attention to where along the branch I'm cutting it. If it's impeding something else or I don't like the look of that branch or it's hiding some of the pretty fruit, then I just remove it. <laughs> uh, you know, I've said it a million times, don't let your pants, plants boss you, though quite frequently, obviously they do. Um, so I'm, I'm loving the way that looks and now I am getting tomatoes, tomatoes on both sides. It really looks fun from the street and it's Those all so good. They're so good <laughs> and it's all I need to come out and I need to before they roast and I roasted tomatoes and roasted peppers in the sun. As soon as we finish, Stuart, I'm going to come out here before you eat any more of them. I'm going to come out here and harvest them. But I could not be more pleased with the way this window box has performed in this t intense heat. Whatever you think about the aesthetics of it, in terms of performance, it has simply been magnificent. What can I say? Um, it's too breezy to even have the umbrella up. So the umbrella is down today. And Stuart, because everyone will, will be unhappy if we don't show a status update of the boxwood, the boxwood balls. Here's another case where I just think, oh, I'm so, so, so happy because I just keep oh, clipping on them. The yeah, and look, I've got little basil tufts here. Oh, there, oh, see, this makes me so happy because I hadn't seen it. Look there. There is one of those purple ball basil seeds that I planted. Oh, they, wow. they really took their time to so germinate. It's going to be a purple ball, oh, which cool. means that later in the season, I'm probably going to have to move those around because they'll get They'll get a little too cozy with one another, but I. <laughs> what a fun way to uh, A little too cozy, but I will, I will take care of that. I need to put some over here, but again, oh here's here's that little one that I showed the other day, but it doesn't seem to be growing. It's just kind of sitting there, but at least it hasn't died or been eaten up by, by bugs. This Joseph's coat, however. It loves the heat, and I love the way it is a great color echo with the sunshine lagustrum. See how pretty it looks over there? And darling little girls on the street. <laughs> okay, Stuart, let's show, let's show from here how pretty the window box. Because I, I never want to take it for granted, and hopefully you guys are not tired. There's a step behind you, I Stuart. I, I feel. I know everybody gets nervous. Okay. I so I, I just, I love, I love the way it looks. And right now, it's, some of the color is slowing down a little bit because it really needed to be fed, and I just did that. The other thing is, I'll mention it again, I did relocate 
Uh, it was, I, and this, this is something else that I love, and I probably already mentioned it, so forgive me if I'm redundant, but I, I love it when you guys make a suggestion that I have already thought in my head I'm going to do, and that's not always the case. Uh, and, and, and you suggest it, and, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet because it's either too heavy or I just haven't gotten around to it. And that is I replaced, just switched out the finials with these pots. Now, why did I do that? This is probably the rationale some of you who suggested it had. So, yeah, okay. So the finials right here. These are stone finials that were at the other house. And I switched them out with, if you'll just turn and look, with the urns that are now on the plinths on the, on the porch. Now, why did I do that? I did that because I needed more color up here on the porch. And I didn't need it down here so much. Now, will this stay this way? Probably not, <laughs> probably in the winter time when I really can't have color up here, I'll probably put the pineapples back and put these back down there, maybe with some evergreens in them or something, I'm not really sure. But that's, that's one of the things I love about container plantings is that they are eminently flexible and even heavy pots can be moved. So right now, if you have some of your container plantings that are really struggling in the heat and the sun. Remember, this is one of those aha moments, Linda, uh, that I had a number of years ago. Containers can be moved. So you don't have to leave it in its current position where it is just floundering because it's too hot. You can move it. You can give it more shade. They are mobile. They are ambulatory. So you can kind of move them around. I desperately need to I desperately need to deadhead all sorts of things in here, and I shall. But look what I don't need to deadhead right now because it's just blooming its head off, and it's also telling me another reason I wish I had my garden journal, to plant my Minoan lace later. Now, some of it will go to seed and bloom earlier in late spring or early summer, but I love it's blooming this time of year when nothing else is as happy. And this seems to be very, very happy. It's Minoan, M-I-N-O-A-N, Minoan lace. It grows very easily from seed. My friend Christy gave me the seed. She bought it in Michigan years ago. And I can pretty much plant it where I choose. It's not as high. And parenthetically, I've noticed that it grows much lower when it's in full sun, which is what these plants really like. And apparently this is thriving. So I have these wonderful tufts of white throughout. There's more of it that hasn't come into bloom that is really handling these high temps. So it's all about planting things that can handle, that can handle the sun. Um, the roses, I think some of you mentioned, you know, the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, the third year they leap. I have found that the first year they creep and the second year typically they leap if we have enough moisture. So, uh, so that's, you know, so that's, that's very, a very good thing. What is not a good thing is the fact that I'm just not sure about this Tony Esther. I'm still not ready to pull it out, but it's pretty crispy, but it's still, it, yeah, it sounds crispy, yes, but it still, it still has some green on it. So I'm just going to leave it here to see if it can tough it out, and if it can tough it out, then it will be all the stronger for it. I will slough off some of this dead foliage so from a distance it doesn't just look like a dead blob. I'm not cutting it back. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not going to really feed it. I'm not going to do anything to stress it any more than it already is. Yesterday, last evening, after it had cooled, I, I did get out my little rotary mower. Um, and it wasn't as fun as it was last time because it was considerably hotter. And thankfully, my grass is considerably thicker. 
So I, what I need to do is I need to, even on my real mower, my hand operated real mower, even on that, I can raise the height of it. And so I need to do that. I need to both sharpen the blades and raise, and raise the height. But, um, but they'll be coming on Thursday to mow with, with the regular mower, so I don't have to worry about it until then. The lantana continues to just bloom its, its head off. Um, I'm so, I, I just love this color palette. And I have to say, never in my gardening life have I had this much color in the summertime. At my other house, you may recall, in the front yard, I reserved 99% of my color for the spring and the fall. Here, with very little effort, thanks to the butterfly candy to, gosh, the agapanthus, to the cleome, to the salvia, I have, I have more color than ever before, and it's because all of these plants are growing where they want to grow. Right place, right plant. Um, some of you suggested, and I don't know why I didn't think of this, so whoever suggested it, thank you, thank you, thank you, I guess I didn't realize that cuttings or pinchings of Dusty Miller could be rooted, and I have not tried it. Well, I should say I am trying it <laughs> uh, right now. I took some of these pinchings, and I, will, I brought them in, and I'm seeing if they're going to put out any roots. It may be that it just takes a little bit longer, but then I can spread it around because typically you can get this to overwinter. The trick, I think, to its beautiful performance and its beautiful contribution to the garden is that you keep it so that it's not lanky. For the most part, doesn't even bloom and just continues to get massive. This started out as just a little, I believe, a four inch, a four inch plant. And it's very, very, very happy here, as are Kayla, who helped me install the entire landscape, could not believe how well the Better Boxwood is doing. And when it's available for mass consumption, she, she wants to be a provider. So I told her I would try to hook the, those two sources up. Um, something I'm also kind of not real happy with, I don't really like that white celosia in there. I will probably take it out. Um, and not replace it, probably. I just, I don't like it, and I don't know that I would like it in the deep purple either. It's probably been the only thing that, to me, has been a little bit of a disappointment, though I do bring it in as a cut flower. But can you see in the background, Stuart, can you see that zinnia? Oh yeah, right. This blooming. It's got all, a white background. Right, so and good. all of those zinnias <laughs> are getting ready to bloom in front of the indomitable white wedding hydrangeas, which is one of the tough, toughest plants I know. Oh, and I wanted to tell you this. So somebody, uh, a neighbor, be careful, Stuart. You know that was there. A neighbor <laughs> came by and was telling me, I had not met her and she, she just asked if she could come up on the hill and visit. I said, of course, but she is a follower. And she said that um, out on Reno, the Home Depot on Reno and maybe Rockwell. Uh, anyway, the one that's far out west off of I-40 that they have white wedding hydrangeas or they did when she was there. And because she saw mine, she bought four of them. But she said when she last looked, there was more. And then there's, there's that reminder again, if you want your local nurseries to, to carry more, of the Southern Living plants, then you just be a squeaky wheel and you tell them, would you please get in more of, of these plants that perform so brilliantly in the South because they've been bred for the South after all. I need more stepping stones in here. And I probably need to cut some of these humongous heads of the white weddings because even they the the plant performs beautifully but even they they when it's 102 start getting a little 
a little tired. But back in here where it looks like there's just a void, uh, I have more zinnias coming up that need to be pinched back. Uh, there's all sorts of foxglove in here that I'm wanting to get established. And then I have another type of artemisia that was gifted to me. I'm going to pinch it back and then I'll be putting this in the ground as soon as I think of it again and kind of have, kind of have the time to do so. So that's just a, a little bit of what's of a Wednesday walkabout here. Have I forgotten anything, Stuart? I don't think so. Um, there is a possibility that as we get into a string instead of a trickle of 100 degree temperatures, that I might relocate some of those topiary, those boxwood topiary that are on the front porch. I might relocate some of those into a shadier disposition. That's a possibility. But for right now, even though it's hot as the Dickens, I'm still, I'm still pretty happy and I hope you guys are happy too. Please don't forget to comment below what conditions are like in your zone and where you live. And if you're not a subscriber, you know what to do. You know the drill, please subscribe hit the like button, make sure to share this content if you think it'll be helpful to someone else. You guys have a great Wednesday.